Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at, and I'm here with you. Yes, is the DJ Roundtable. First episode for 2024. And for 2024, we brought someone back from 2023. He's like Santa Claus, Woo! comes around once in a while. Yeah. You know, all the <laughs> way from Texas, our yeah. friend. Uh, if you if you want to introduce yourself to the people who have not known who you are, you want to introduce yourself very quickly. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, glad to be back, guys. Uh, haven't been back. Uh, I've been just busy on Tuesdays and stuff like that. And so uh, the thing that I've been doing on Tuesdays, I'm taking a break from for the next few weeks. So I'm going to try to be on. But my name is Brylan. Um, I am uh, with my company called Funky Town Entertainment down in Fort Worth, Texas. So, um, yeah, for those who I haven't really gotten to meet or see, it's good to see you guys. And uh, hopefully I'll be seeing you guys a little bit more here in the in the near future. So glad to be back. Yep, it's always good to have you, sir. And again, you're always welcome here. And you have to excuse me. Uh, I have this crazy cough that won't go away. Uh, so I do apologize for you guys out there. It, it's laden over from me being sick for the last episode uh, a couple weeks ago. So I apologize to you. In advance, we'll get through this, though. Uh, we got DJ Brentley just came in. He, oh, he's got a uh, – he's doing an inhaler. Are you oh, yeah. too, sir? Oh, no, I smoke too much. Oh, okay. That's different. Um, the uh, the fun thing is that, uh, again, it's always good to have uh, people here from different areas, different parts of the country, and they had different ideas. And one of the things is the last episode uh, we had for last year, um, which was uh, a great episode. And, uh, again, if you're watching this on Twitch, um, make sure you go over to YouTube Follow the channel on YouTube, TBM Productions DJ One on YouTube. And if you're at watches on YouTube, do me a favor, click that like button. Make sure you subscribe, hit the subscribe down below, and make sure you hit check the bell icon because when we drop new episodes on Mondays, I want to make sure you know you get it and you can watch it and then ask questions like the question I'm about to read right now from a great viewer on YouTube. If you're watching this live on Twitch, please don't be afraid. Ask questions. We're here to answer as much as we possibly can. Uh, we'll give our two cents, and uh, you can make, hopefully, an informed decision what you want to do. Uh, uh, DJ Aga uh, goes, so there's a question for the panel. I know this is a preference, preference, but when uh, are the th uh, thoughts on playing the same artist back-to-back -back during open dance? Or how about playing uh, too many songs from one artist throughout the night? I always consider it taboo to play some art some artists back to back. Does everyone feel taboo to also? So I'm going to say play artists back to back. You know, again, you could have a couple songs, and it been depends on the artist. You know, if you have, uh, you know, a DJ producer artist like let's say Tiesto or uh, Aviche or something like that. You could play a few of his songs, and they're different singers, different different feels to the song, and you can play it back to back. Most people won't know that's the same artist, but if you wanted to play like six Aliara Grande songs, or if you wanted to play six Mariah Carey songs, which DJ Bradley loves Mariah Carey, make sure you tag him. Love Mariah Carey, DJ Bradley. All I want for Christmas. Him. Yeah. <laughs> all her Steve. hits. All of her hits. Make sure you tag DJ Bradley because he loves her. Uh, <laughs> I don't six... mind her, but all I want for Christmas, it's played out. I think the last couple of gigs I actually played it, I got to the all I want for Christmas is, and I'm like, I can't do this anymore, and drop Soldier Boy. You! And, and just, that was it. What so? Yeah. I, I, I can't do it. I just can't. <laughs> Just be glad uh, we're out of Christmas. I don't have a problem with it. But the thing is, again, doing that to back to back or six pit bull tracks, yeah, that can get repetitive very quickly. Doing a couple okay. throughout the night, I don't have a problem with that personally. You know, if you play one song here, one song there, no big deal. You know, you're you're, you're splitting it up, you're breaking up. It's kind of like the organized dance songs, you know, cha cha slide, keep it shuffle. You don't play them back to back to back. You may play one here, you may play one there, depending on the crowd and if the client wants that. So it's not your always guarantee. If you're always going into the same thing, the same holes and doing the playing the same music, you're not 
exploring things. You're not doing things. You're not customizing it for that event. So the big thing to walk away from is if you always go to these six tracks every single time for the dance floor at the same time, what are you doing? Are you doing, are you doing the same thing, doing the same event over and over again? Or are they just hot hitters that work very well and you can mix it up a little bit? And do you do mix it up? Do you change it up the order they're in? But playing back to back to back to back to same artists, again, there's more questions I have there, but I don't see a big problem with it as long as it's not the same singing artists. It's different, like, you know, again, DJs or producers. So I'm going to start off with DJ Brentley, who loves Mariah Carey. <laughs> so this quote playing if i'm playing a whole song out you'll never catch me playing the same artist back to back but i've found more and more because i'm only when i'm mixing i'm only playing you know a hook here a verse and a chorus maybe two verses and choruses so i may not play them back to back but don't be surprised in one of my sets if you hear you know, Pitbull's voice twice in an hour. It might be me playing timber, and then it might be me doing this one, you know, segue I work with a lot, and only because I found how well it works is uh, using the TJR, we want to party, you know, we like to drink, tear it up and party until the, the drop comes, and then drop in, y'all having a good time out there from Pitbull's uh, uh, whatever song that got, my head is fried from the weekend. But don't stop don't, the party. Don't stop the party, yeah. And then I'll play, you know, Don't Stop the Party, you know, that one. And I'll only use that ending chorus with that, and I'm out of it. So you'll get, you'll probably catch me doing that a lot. And in that same stroke, you will probably hear me come back to a artists, certain artists a couple of times a night, just because I know they're, you know, the impact of it. But then again, if I'm playing that same artist two or three times a night, like if I go to Kesha, you might hear three different songs from her in the night, but you're only going to hear, you know, one part of one song here that segues well with three others or a verse and a chorus. And that, you know, what you said earlier about mixing and all that, you know, these songs work well together. I find, and this is something I'll joke to my, you know, the person who drives me around at night about that I'm finding a lot of the gigs I'm at, college pubs, weddings, almost be all identical and getting very episodic. It's the same thing over and over because at a wedding, you cannot break new music generally. It has to be a proven kind of track on the charts that you know will work. So me dropping Little Boo thing, the first week it came out, I put, I was just trying it out. And no, it flopped for the first couple months I tried to play it. Now you throw it on, everybody's screaming it. So again, that one meme from of you know that everybody sees the DJ when he plays your favorite song two weeks before it's your favorite song. But when you're doing that, working in those in that realm, you know, not breaking new music, but working in many sets and finding what segues well together, and certain tried and true segues I use have never failed me. And that's something my business partner and I were discussing today when we're mixing how to create those mini sets to build off of and then teach that. So yeah, I'm not scared to play two or three songs from the same artist in a reception, but I'm definitely not going to play the whole song out. Okay. Uh, well, you're also, you know, you always play the same, whole song. You're, you're very much, you know, just a couple a couple seconds of the song. You give people snippets. That's it. And snipping it out, do 2000 songs at a wedding. <laughs> but you're by doing that, you're playing the parts everyone knows and keeping their energy level up. So and you can see it thanks to TikTok, especially. If you start play, like obviously don't stop believing, you gotta play the whole song out. But a lot of these dance songs, what if you just play the, the prime parts of that song and keep that energy level by going from prime part of the banger to prime part of the next banger. People are just going to keep that energy level high. And for a reception, this also might be why I've seen lots of puking, lots of shots, lots of ambulances passing out. But I don't back down once I get that dance floor rolling. Like, I'll give you your first hour. I'll be very open format, all ages friendly. 
I'll play the, generally speaking, the only traditional slow song I'm going to play after that first hour. And then it's 128. Let's go. Well, the and, other thing also, you being in Wisconsin, the, uh, what, the second most uh, heavy drinking state, uh, also uh, has uh, some uh, fun effects there as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, Se- We've got, what, six of the ten out of the top ten drinking cities in the nation, and I'm in one of them, so it's all good. I, I, I'm good with how that play, plays out. All the beer flows very easily in Wisconsin. So going from Wisconsin, almost the great white north, going down to beautiful Texas. So, sir, what about you? Do you feel that you would uh, play songs back to back to back to back with the same artist, or would you do some breakups, or how would you handle that? Yeah, I mean, for one specific artist, like if we're going to pick one artist to go with, I'm not going to play them back to back to back to back to back to back. But like Brentley said, I mean, I'm 100% okay with, you know, if you're considering it like quick mixing, you're playing about 45 seconds, maybe a minute of one song going into another popular song of theirs. Um, That kind of stuff to me is totally fine, but you're not going to catch me playing full length songs. Um, by the same artist back to back to back um i think people would just kind of view it as redundant and kind of get a little bored with it um there was one instance though that i did specifically have a couple they were big fans of this one specific group and they told me they said hey like in the middle of the dance set can you please play like the two they gave me the two or three songs they wanted me to play strung together um they just told me just to plan it out whenever you feel is best. And so I did. And it worked it worked out fine because everyone knows this couple loved that group. So it worked out fine. But usually I'm just gonna be playing if it's back to back, I'll be playing just about, you know, 45 seconds to a minute of each, kind of having like a little that artist power like, like a little joke with a little power hour and then get out. So Okay. So I'm gonna go to Ohio, just to the uh east of me by uh other side of Indiana to uh, Dwayne. What about you, sir? What do you, uh, do you, what do you do when people, or do you feel that it's okay to play the same artist back to back or do you try breaking it up or what, what is your handle on this question? I usually stick with a, a certain groove, but lately I guess you can call them Swifties. A couple of um, um, events, they are big Taylor Swift songs and that's all I got on request. So, I played a lot of hers back to back, but normally I don't. I usually stick with the with the genre or maybe a producer. For example, if I play like a new Jack Swing, you know, um Teddy Riley, I usually stick with Guy or um if I do new edition, I usually stick with like new edition, Bobby Brown, that kind of stuff, or West Coast um Death Row sounds. So I usually stick with like a producer or a sound if I was to do that. But as far as artists, Taylor Swift has been the main thing that's been rammed down my um, throat lately. She is a powerhouse. She is a woman who uh, there's a lot of people out there who are fans for. She has some great songs. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I got to go back to DJ Brentley for this really quick question. Who do you rather play more, Taylor Swift or Mariah Carey? Oh, hands down, Taylor Swift. Well, there you he, go. And, and, and here, it's not just because of a like or dislike of either. Especially, and a, a friend of mine turned me on to playing Love Story in a, and this is like three, four years ago. He's like, I dare you to drop Love Story in the middle of the bar right now. And it was like midnight on a Saturday night and the club was packed. And I'm like, all right. And he's a, he's a friend of mine who's a DJ too. And I'm like, cool. And it was before this big surge of hers came, but the entire bar went up. And when I saw that go on, and this is like four years ago. So when I really realized the importance of her songs to the crowd that books me or is in front of me, I'm, especially in the college clubs, you're probably going to hear her on the hour, every hour out of me. And it may, but it definitely won't be the whole song. Like um, there's the digital, digital Dave remix or um, cor- uh, what is it? The chorus first ver- uh, version of never getting back together. I'm only playing that part of it, and you've got 30 seconds. Blank space. You might get the first verse and chorus out of me, but I want to keep the women in, his, in any particular instance I'm at as engaged and impossible. 
So the guys will be like, yeah, I better get back out there with them because they're singing along and they're singing blank space and I'm not feeling too good about this now being her boyfriend kind of stuff. I better be with her. So I'm always trying to play the woman in my crowd. But Taylor Swift, oh, yeah. And, you know, one thing about playing, a, you know, an artist or something over and, you know, more than once or back to back, it brings up a wedding I did last summer where uh, I was supposed to play on the hour, every hour, Toto's Africa. However, uh, during dinner, their joke was to play it, uh, a vitamin string quartet or one of the instrumental versions of it, and then kick off the dance with, you know, the actual reception with it at the spotlights, and then play the Weezer version of it and see how many people caught on. I played it about 11 times throughout the course of the day. I added a couple extra in just because it seemed appropriate to do so. And it was one of the funniest things ever because after like the sixth time, everybody was really starting to catch on and laugh about it. That's always fun when you have that. And, oh, yeah. Yep. When you get the crowd going like that, sometimes that's going to be a fun thing. And speaking of someone who probably has a lot of uh, Taylor Swift fans and someone who does with weddings as well as school events, uh, Mr. Jeff Johnson over there in beautiful South Carolina. He is uh, unfortunately, I'm sorry, North Carolina. He's North Carolina. I, I'm South South Carolina. Carolina. I keep getting them too mixed up. I'm North sorry. Carolina. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want the Carolinas. It's, the, it's the first of the two states. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's dealing with some, uh, some inclement weather there with some rain over there. Uh, hopefully uh, he is. Sa- I know he's safe and his family's safe and stuff like that. But uh, I'm sure when you do events um, in uh, North Carolina or even go down to South Carolina and visit Cool Thing or something and you do a school event, uh, I'm sure you get some Taylor Swift, uh, maybe a lot of requests for it. How do you handle people who have want multiple planes of the same artist? Do you do that? Do you not do that? How do you, how do you uh, handle that kind of question? Yeah, well, I mean, if, you know, if it's a... Taylor Swift, yeah. I mean, uh, most high school events are going to have multiple Taylor Swift requests. Not a big deal. I'll, you know, spread them in throughout the night. I usually don't play them back to back. Um, uh, Taylor Swift songs, you know, it depends on which song. And the, the real, the real hardcore fans are. Uh, I mean, you know, they they would be happy to 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 listen to all too well the ten minute version in the middle of a dance track. I mean, a dance set. They would love that, you know. Um, but you know, it'd kill the vibe. But you know, that those you know fifty girls would love it. You know, um, not that it's not a bad song. It's a great song, great writing. But um, I usually don't play a lot of uh, a lot of Taylor Swift back to back. You know, I'll play some Pitbull back to back, Black Eyed Peas black uh, back to back. Um, you know, just, you know, various, you know, some Madonna, if it's, you know, an old set, an 80 set, I'll throw a couple Madonnas back to back, but, um, rare, I mean, it's not that often there. It's, you know, maybe, maybe once, you know, in a gig, I'll throw something back to back. Um, and it has to, you know, match or, you know, go in the same flow of, uh, what I'm, what I'm playing. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know. Uh, but as far as Taylor Swift goes, yeah, you've got to you've got to play play to the crowd. You know, if it's an older crowd, you got to play to the older you, you know their music. You know, it's simple as that. I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, but yeah, I get a lot of that. And you know, one of the things also um, speaking of Taylor Swift, and I, I ran into it. Uh, I did a, uh, um, a wedding corner. I know they had a DJ back out on a cheer group. And it was a bunch of girls, a little bit older than my granddaughter, you know, 10, 11, um, 12-year-olds. And they loved Taylor Swift. So it was a lot of back-to-back-to-back Taylor Swift, but they loved it, and that's what they liked. And then the parents wanted 80s, 90s stuff, you know, because they are like my age. So it's like I wanted to hear, you know, stuff from early 90s, mid-90s, even late 90s. You know, they're having fun with stuff. So... It, it, it's it's always a strike try striking balance between stuff and i i'll tell you you know playing bad blood and having them out there singing it and stuff like that and they're acting it out i will say swift fans they are very very cool they are very dedicated and they will act out the song very easily so mr cool thing which was in south carolina not to use with north carolina uh <laughs> uh got a question for you sir 
what about you for playing back to back to back to back stuff? Oh, well, basically, I don't really like the idea of playing an artist back to back because that's kind of like boring. That doesn't make you a good DJ. What makes a really good DJ is having a good variety of music within a DJ set. Like I could go from hip hop to disco to pop and just go all over the place. And what I would mostly do is play the entire track all the way through because they're there to listen to music, not have a quick mix. And when I turn on, if I do want to do that in the future, like improve my DJ skills, they're not going to like it. So I'm just going to keep it at playing the entire song all the way through. So I do like to have a mixture of music in my DJ set so it doesn't get too boring. Well, the other thing is that you got to remember uh, DJ uh, Brettley also does a lot of clubs. And clubs, club club atmosphere is totally different than a wedding. A wedding is Why? one thing. A club is whole nother world. A bar is a whole nother world. And, you know, you got to remember what kind of clientele he's dealing with. Different clientele, different market, different way of doing things. And you can't, you know, again, he, it works for him. I mean, that worked for you. But, you know, exactly. what, whatever it is, it's not a problem. The big thing is that you you would not play back to back. So if someone, yeah, a bunch of people come up as for Taylor Swift. You wouldn't play Taylor Swift like a no, two because I, you know, No, I hate Taylor Swift and I hate Madonna and I hate all artists like that. So I'm not going to play it. Okay. So you don't wouldn't pay Taylor. Okay. No big deal there. But uh, I, I got to ask you for this one then. And I'm going to go around the room really quickly. Um, would you play? Electric Cowboy, we got the moves. And have you heard of that song? I've never heard of that song. Okay. Never. Jeff, Electric Cowboy, we got the moves. Jeff. Have not heard it or not played it? Would I play it? Not going to play it. Okay. Dwayne, Electric Cowboy, we got the moves. Play, yay or nay, or you've never heard it? I thought you was going to come to me last. I was trying to cheat and <laughs> listen real quick. I've never heard it. <laughs> never heard I've it? Never okay. I've never heard of that one. Yeah. I've never okay. Yeah, I've never heard it. I'm, um, yeah, I've never heard it. <laughs> DJ Bradley, what about you? My sack's big enough. You're damn right I'll play it. Okay. I, but I'm, then, again, if it, but if it, you know, if it won't do what it's supposed to do, I'm going to mix out of it. I'm not scared to, you know, and if it's one of those songs that I realize that, wait a minute, this is working and doing what it's supposed to do. Maybe I will give you a second verse and chorus or, you know, do the first and the last. Well, that's so, a yeah, hard song. I big enough one. That would be a hard song to quick mix out because it's dancey, then it goes like metal, and it goes back into dancey, then it goes into metal, and then it goes into dancey, it goes back into metal. And, you know, yeah, there's, it, it's, it's, it, there's a lot, you, a see, lot to it. When it does that, though, you can catch certain, and this is how I've been teaching my DJs to quick mix. If you don't touch, you know, like if you don't trust your hand speed when you're using, you know, your hot cue pads to go from D to C or D to F, however you have it set up to go from what, you know, that course, the next one, mix the song into itself. So if it's doing a lot of that back and forth, you just have to find the right spots to mix it back into itself. Loop the song and if you look away. And if you look at my all my tracks in my library, it's a little obscene. Even my business partner and one of our DJs are like, how long does it actually take you before you get, say, a week's worth of downloads into your computer and, to, and ready to mix? I'm like, it's a good week plus by the time I've screened it, made cue points, and gotten it ready to go. But yeah, there's a way to mix in and out of every one of them. You just have to figure it out. Okay. Rylan, what about you? Would you... Uh... Electric Cowboy, we got the moves. Yes or no? And have you heard it? I know the song. I've heard it a, hand, like, a couple times. I don't see myself playing it because I don't think anybody would ask me to play it. But if my couple wanted it, I'll I'll play it for you. But I'm not going to make the call to actually just play that song outright. So. <laughs> I, I feel that if you get the right crowd, the right mood, it might be something to throw in there. Could you be surprised? Who would like it? Like Tracy likes them, likes them, and it was totally found by another DJ talking to me about it and showing me the song. And I showed Tracy it; she fell in love with it, and she wa she wants to go see them. They're coming here to Chicago uh, to uh, Aragon Ballroom 
in May. She wants to go and go see them. They're going to brawl through. This is true, but hopefully not, you know, hopefully not with her there. Um, yes, the Aragon Brawl Room. Uh, yes, I've heard that name many times being here. I mean, it, that went hand in hand years ago with the name Brawl Room when they sold the buckets of beer for like 12 bucks. More beer than you could possibly consume in an entire evening for like 12 bucks. So that's for us mere Chicagoans. I like the, uh, you guys up there north in the cheddar, uh, Pat Cheddar Curtain, that uh, a bucket of beer that's 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 a, that's a Tuesday afternoon, you know, that's nothing. It, pretty much, yeah. not even. It's like a, that's breakfast. Oh yeah, that's like that's a noon that's a noon lunchtime snack, you know. <laughs> so you know the one of the things oh, is oh, that well, I was going to say before you leave, I just heard it. I I think that's a song that I'll probably will play with and make a uh, mashup or something. I think it'll work if I play with it as opposed to playing it straight up because i do like the beat and it sounds like when i heard it it made me think of like a black guy's peas kind of thing or edm and then they had that rock kind of vibe like link um was that link biscuit yeah that kind of stuff biscuit so, and yeah lincoln park yeah a little, uh, a little bit more biscuit. i think a little harder than that <laughs> I'm, I'm more like I, I i think more like slipknot and more of that heavier metal feel but you had that EDM uh touch to it with the beginning part and the video right there with the haircuts and everything i mean the video uh if you have not done so already i definitely recommend go check out at least watch the video the video is very interesting they're a german group um they have a couple other songs too they did like every time we touch which oh, is okay. uh very interesting because it's 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 every time we touch from Cascada in the beginning part and they go into a metal part they have like they have a couple albums out and they were originally uh electric uh eskimo but they dropped the eskimo part um because they want to offend people so they went to electric cowboy and it's uh it, it's a very very interesting group um but, you know uh we got the moves I, I i actually edited so i got rid of the uh the foul language in it there's only one f bomb in it uh but they got a couple other ones which I have a little bit more obscene language. It is not for uh, children, so make sure that if you're listening to it, watching it, make sure there's no kids around. Uh, but again, if you edit it out the the bad language, you can you can play you could you could play it. It's 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 very interesting. Uh, they're a very interesting group, very interesting song. Um, but going on and building upon that, <coughs> what in 2024? I know 2024 is only a short time we've already been into it. You know, this is, you know, barely two weeks in. <laughs> if I can stop coughing. Um, what do you see now that you're getting from the music uh, services that you feel might, to get a keyword there, it's always hard to look at your crystal ball and figure out, might be a bigger hit weeks from now. And I'm going to start with Jeff. If there's anything he's seen that might be a, a good hit, uh, maybe not too distant future. Uh, you know, I haven't seen a lot. I haven't really, uh, it's too early in the season. I mean, it's uh, off time for me right now. Um, I haven't been looking for, for much. So I don't, my next gig is not until uh, five weeks from now. So uh, January is always uh, like slow, if, if non-existent for me. So I will start looking probably uh, at the end of the month and see what's, uh, see what's popular, what's, uh, what's hitting. So what uh, what charts do you look at to uh, get your idea of uh, popular songs? Do you look at what's uh, popular on TikTok? Do you look at what's popular. Yeah, TikTok's on... pretty uh, is is pretty popular to to hit up because I mean you're seeing what's trending. You know, not only in you know one genre. I mean, it, it's it crosses over uh, quite a bit. So that's that's pretty big. You know, just on uh, YouTube, see what uh, other DJs are playing. You know, I'll look at other uh, gig logs and uh, see what's. You know, if, if it's recent, uh, if it was like a gig log from December or something, see what's uh, what's hidden. All right, cool thing. Who is on TikTok? Has a TikTok channel, and does a lot on TikTok. What about you? Uh, what there's a song that you see so far, or have you not been playing anything with the new music? And uh, yeah. Not yet. I've been looking at my DJ record pool, streaming services, and 
nothing much has really caught my eye. I mostly like I like I mostly been playing the older stuff from the fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties. You know so the older stuff, but I haven't seen anything new. And in yeah, my next gig is not until late September, so I got a whole year to find some new tracks that might well, work. I'll give you plenty of time, but I hope I get gigs before then. I hope so too. Like, you will. You will. You're you're a good DJ. Yeah. And speaking of another so, great DJ in Ohio, Dwayne, we're gonna go to you, which also happens to be a music teacher. So he has to have an ear for music to hear things and uh, has to teach people how to understand music, you know, more than just a typical person to sit back, listen to music. He has to, you know, tell people, okay, this is how you play an instrument, this is how you do things, and and and, and embrace them with music and, ha and give them the passion of love of music. And again, with you, with all the kids and stuff that you deal with on a daily basis um, and everything going on, is there a song that you're seeing now on a chart or somewhere that you're like, this might be a hit three months, a month from now, whatever. Is there a song that you would say it's on your radar? Um, Not really, but there are a couple of songs that I would say is a layover from on 2023 because i know when i first heard little boo thing i loved it and i dropped it but then it didn't work i didn't get the kind you know kind of response so i stopped playing it but now lately i've been hearing everybody saying everybody finally caught on so that might be something i put in into heavy rotation again but other than that um not too many things has you know piqued my curiosity it's the same old, same old, this, you know, the TikTok song, Ski Wee and, you know, Sexy Red and all that kind of stuff. I play, I tolerate it because that's what they want, but that's not anything that grabs oh, come on, my... you can't You can't be playing Pound Town for kids, you know? Uh, it, it, teenagers and stuff like that. Yeah, no. That right there, I just... With with uh, kids probably ask for it and stuff like that. They ask for a lot of raunchy mm -hmm. stuff. And you're like, no, no, I can't, I can't play that. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. And... As your as yourself as you know, as a teacher, so I'm sure people are asking for it. You know, in a club mm -hmm. where DJ Brentley's at, yeah, not a problem. At an adult event, not a problem. But you know, kids ask for a lot of things. And I'm sure Jeff runs into it too, that kids ask for stuff. And it's like, yeah, no, I I'm sorry, little little Bobby or little Susie. I, I can't play that. Oh, uh, and speaking about schools and stuff, we had like our school Christmas um or I guess holiday party that I DJ that. Which was funny because seeing your teacher friends and they was I'll drop a few of those songs that was kind of like that because they requested it. It is funny to see certain ones. I'm not gonna say what they no do. no no, but they to get down, them, have fun. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah. To see them out there doing that, I was like, I didn't know Miss So and So knew about those hood songs like that. <laughs> they were <was laughs> out there doing it. <laughs> So Jeff, are you getting? Uh, do you get requests for those songs that you would say, "I'm sorry, no" for those school events, right? You get quite a bit. Yeah, I usually uh, for school events, I will usually ask you know ahead of time what they want to listen to, and I will try to get clean versions of most of all of those, um, and I'll familiarize myself with as many as I can. And it's usually all you know, pretty hard rap, and um, for for the school events. And Taylor Swift, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, you know, there's, um, there's, you know, one, one thing has been trending lately is this, um, the cha-cha slide remix by this guy, I, I think is C-Bands or, or Zeddy Will or something like that. He's, uh, it's, it's really trending. It's really trending hard right now. And I'm gonna have to find that where I can get a hold of that because that's just a, a live performance yeah, but you know, if you can drop that or even like 20, 30 seconds of that, you know, it's um that'll hit hard for, you know, especially teens in uh twenties that uh that really watch a lot of TikTok. So so stuff like that, yeah. you know, just gotta keep your eye out for and you know, try to make it happen. Yeah, there's a lot of the uh a lot of kids uh watch TikTok and get influenced. My own granddaughter, uh Stanley Cup, the Stanley uh Cups, she and uh, DJ Brentley shake his head. I'm sure uh, his daughter wants a Stanley Cup or has asked for it. 
but the Stanley Cup is not just for NHL. It's also the Stanley Little Metal Coffee Cups that are insulated. And my granddaughter needed to have one. She wanted one really bad. She wanted one for Christmas. I want, I want, I want. You know, it's like, okay, uh, we're not trying to spoil her. But the thing is that uh, Tracy got her because, you know, she spends time here. Uh, she has a uh, Stanley Cup here. Um and again, you know, it, it's one of the things that kids see that stuff on TikTok. Uh, one other thing also is actually from TikTok, and I have, and the light's kind of hitting it, is one of these touch hands, hand sanitizers. This is another thing she saw on TikTok, and it's... it's Those are all over my house. Yeah, these are spray hand sanitizers. Uh, this one is... Uh, rainwater scented. Um, uh, cool packaging. Can't reload it, though. That's the bad part. Uh, but these, this right here, this is a popular thing that she saw on TikTok. So the music you hear on TikTok and stuff like that, it, there's just traction to it. There's people who want to hear it and so forth so on. Uh, DJ Adrian E., thank you for coming in tonight. And um, oh, I thought of something. I thought of something because of, we were talking about TikTok. Um, this past Sunday, I played It's Corn on Apple Music, and the kids were getting into it because we were doing like dance, like music related games at church, and they loved It's Corn. They were also listening to Rain Tacos, a lot of Disney stuff. So, um, DJ Adrian E <laughs> said uh, he's liking a bunch of new, uh, new of the Nicki Minaj uh, tracks. Uh, so, oh, yeah. Not the, not the original. That was actually one song I was going to say. I was going to say there's this, there's this one song that um, Big if Friday Girls. Me, I was like the the um, like for 2024. Like, what's one that you're looking forward to, or you think might be decent? I don't know how long it'll stay because you know every all the songs now just rotate in for about a month, month and a half, when they're out. But um, <laughs> if that, if if that, even if you get that. <laughs> Um, but there's like this one version. Of, there's a song that she's kind of on right now. It's called FTCU, and it stands for <laughs> F the Club Up. Uh, if you get you the clean called. version, it's I think it's going to be going well, and like the ladies will like it. But uh, Nicki Minaj, we'll she lasts. has she hey, you can work woman. Oh, you can't you can, wordplay that. You can work. You can wordplay that to no bystanders from Travis Scott, and it will. Be, not that I've done it yet, but oh yeah. I did a Saturday night and wow. Yeah. The kids were just 21 to 26 year olds in Rochester, Minnesota. Drinks were flying up in the air and people were jumping. It was insane. Speaking of Rochester, I actually stayed there back in 2017. So my dad had to go to Mayo. And again, yeah, I didn't really like it. <laughs> it's a crap town. <laughs> it, it had a really good run for a while. And I was at their big, I was DJing at the biggest club in Rochester until COVID shut it down completely. And it was the bar, the city came down to the bar so hard that they told Mayo Clinic, who owned the building of the bar, not to renew their lease because what's a COVID protocol? They didn't care. Needless to say, like Fourth of July weekend that year, I wound up taking a last minute wedding because the DJ canceled because they got shut down. But now it's a it's a ghost town again. Well, that's you know one of the things that uh, sometimes you know people do things you know government trying to do the right thing and they make mistakes. They're human. They you know yep. they, they see what happens afterwards. But um, you know it, it's it's one of the things that uh, seeing these songs like this with Nicki Minaj and um, you know the, the new stuff right here from uh, from yeah, her. Yeah. In which she's stealing songs from original artists from back in the day. She's stealing it. She's not stealing it. She's sampling. Yeah, and yeah, I'm sure they pay, it. they pay rights for it. That's that's the thing. They they pay for that. No record company is going to say, hey, I'm going to take your music. Uh, they're going to pay for it. So the original artist is going to make some money for doing nothing. That's not a bad thing. It's a win for them. And someone should take a, a song and redo it. Bad thing. Just keep that sample to the original artist. Stop remaking everything. That's... Oh, it's what I will agree with you on this. In. And they've been doing that ever since the eighties. How many eighties songs are ripoffs of songs from the fifties? There's a ton. 
True, but this these last couple years, like David Guetta, how many songs? It's uh, he hasn't put out a new song in years. The closest thing has been what you know, I'm good, and all these you know remakes of every song he's getting his hands on. At I'm least good Pitbull is, is, is on blue. Oh, you know, uh, there's more than that. Praise, praise you, uh, God, uh, baby, don't hurt me. Yeah. There's like a dozen that if I had my my main computer in front of me, I'd be just rattling them off. Here's uh here's some interesting information for you. Vanilla Ice, you know, Ice Ice Baby, you know, that took that uh, sample from uh, Queen yeah. Yeah. under pressure, right? Yeah. Under pressure. Um, so he he uh, he wanted to. Yeah, he wanted right. to use that, and they gave him this price. So he just said, "Well, it's cheaper just to buy the to buy the entire rights to the song." So the he bought the entire rights to the song. He owns that now, just so he could he could uh, so he could play uh, "Ice Ice Baby." You know, so that's you know, you know we need sampling. Uh, sampling yeah. can do wonders if you use it correctly. No a lot of people, a lot of people growing up in the uh, '80s had you know never never knew of that. So. It's sad that there's no originality anymore. There's no original oh. content anymore. It's all these stupid remakes. Well, it, even Pitbull's on that. You know, jumping with Little John, uh, Freak. I prefer uh, has, I prefer the Halloween. Oh, <laughs> although, you know, for the 30 seconds that, you know, jumping was, you know, banging there, I mean, it was a viable track, College Club or a Wedding, for all the 30 seconds. And now no one even cares to hear the song anymore. And being in Wisconsin, you can't really ethically play the Pitbull version of that because people look at you funny. You need to play the House of Pain version. So, yeah. but it's Wisconsin. There's certain if you know the Wisconsin Badgers' main song is "Jump" uh, or "Jump Around" rather. And if you go to you know DJ for the Packers or any Packers event, you better have a good copy of "Bang on the Drum" handy, or you're going to have some trouble. Just play Bear Down Chicago Bears every five minutes at Packers game. They'll love you. It's okay. I, 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 uh, a friend of mine who was, you know, one of the guys that was working with me uh, for the last back, uh, Packers game I did, Stadium View, he's like, he, he's like playing, you know, Gary Glitter, Rock and Roll Part 2. Little did we know it's a KC song. That was a bad call that night. And needless to say, we had to get back on track by literally putting jump around on right after that. Just, just to get things going on track. And we had no clue until we threw that in that that was the KC, you know, da -da 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 -da, go Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And also, jump around is also a sample of a song from the 1950s. Yep. Harlem Shuffle. So again, again, sampling yeah, songs have been going around for a long time. Uh, will it ever end? No, because again, artists look at a song and say, hey, this is successful once, I can make it successful again. And right or wrong, you know, again, it, uh, public be the judge. So, uh, but it also, but I was going to say, also, sampling keeps a lot of um, old, old artists. Maybe it's just because I'm old. I like the old school stuff. It's because I'm old. <laughs> but it, as a, a musician, if somebody sampled your song, it keeps your keeps you relevant, and then they get paid from um, using a oh, yeah. song. So it's a win win. So that's why a lot of them don't get upset anymore. After, you know, after the Rick James, um, MC Hammer debacle and stuff. So, Brylan, what about you? What do you what do you feel that? Uh... For you, far as uh, again, you said one song that uh, you feel it's getting popular. Anything else you've seen down in Texas? Is there like you know something else you feel that's going to be popular? Um, I mean, we're not too too much different compared to like I guess the rest of the country when it comes to like the popular viral stuff that everyone just sees online. So, I mean, club wise, there's definitely some good club stuff you could play. Like some little differences that like, like right, kind of like hot on TikTok and stuff like that. Um, like that Jack Harlow song, that "Loving Me" song, um, pops to my head. But um, is it "Loving Me" or yeah, it was that "Loving on Me"? Loving on me, yeah, on me, loving on me. Um, I mean that song's just a good classic kind of club, like kind of clubby kind of hit. But I mean nothing really too different compared to the rest of the country. I guess we'll say, in, in my opinion, yeah, it's not my version or. My copy is right on here. It's ready to go whenever there's a request, but I'm probably not going to get a request because 
most people here in South Carolina don't really like the more modern stuff. They like the older stuff. Well, uh, you know, every market's different. Could you look? You look at uh, GJ Brentley's market. You know, you can't play the same things there. You can't play here, and they can't play the same things here. You can play down by you, cool thing. And even the old Jeff, who's just north of you, probably plays different stuff than you do. Sometimes, you know, it all boils down to knowing your crowd. And this goes to the next question for you guys for the table, and that is when you're DJing and you're working, you know, a, a room. It doesn't matter what the event is. It could be, you know, a party. It could be a wedding. It could be a club. What are your three, three signs you look for in a cloud in a crowd in a uh, in a crowd that make you know that you're hitting the right stuff? Other than a full dance floor and people singing along. Those are give me's. So you take out the people blocking the dance floor, or full dance floor, and sing along to a song. What are the three other things you look for to make sure you're hitting the right cylinders on those songs for people? So I'm going to start with a cool thing first. What are your three things, oh. the three tells you have to make sure you're hitting the right stuff on for uh, your clients? Basically, I look at their age maybe what they're wearing like if they're wearing their if they're wearing camo like if i go to the bar right behind my house if they're wearing camo or something like southern stuff you know southern clothing then i would play put on some country music so that's telling you what to play what tells yeah. you that you're actually hitting the right songs what are the three things you see that I tells can... you you're hitting the right songs what are the tells that you see them dancing have a good time well, again, that's again dancing, and singing. That's all part of it. Is there something that's else you see? Is it the amount of people drinking? Is it? Oh the, yeah. Well, people come and requesting I, I songs. Like, yeah, it's mostly people coming up to me asking for song requests, and if it's a drinking crowd, then yeah, I see them with their like they come to the dance floor with their drinks. Okay. So Jeff, what about you? What are the three things you see that gives you tells on the crowd that you're hitting the right songs? Besides the uh, dancing and the singing along, uh, I look for reactions. Like um, if it's at a wedding, I'll look for bridesmaids or groomsmen. Um, if you get two groomsmen jumping up on, you know, <laughs> doing chest bumps uh, when you when you put a song on, you know you've hit the right nerve. Uh, if you t if you see two bridesmaids. Um, doing something crazy, <laughs> maybe twerking or, or, you know, just something crazy at a wedding, you know, that it, and they're really loving the music. That's a oh, sign yeah. that yeah, you've hit, you've hit well. the right, uh, you've hit the right note. So yeah. yeah, I look for that. I look for, you know, the gimmies, obviously the people that are mouthing the songs uh, at school dances. I'll look for mainly girls uh, that will like grab each other and come to the dance floor not just there, you know, somebody strolling out to the dance floor. They're like, they grab each other, you know, and they will run to the floor. Like, we've got to dance to this song, you know, the, the wobble's on, you know, we've got to dance to it, you know. So, you know, stuff like that you look for. Yeah, that's what I look forward to as well. If they're singing along, if they're smiling, if they're, if they're doing, you know, dancing happily, then yeah, then I know that I'm doing a good job. So I kind of, Agree with you there. <laughs> DJ Adrian E says party, uh, bridal party woos, which is kind of what you're saying, Jeff. Uh, during intros, there's energy. Uh, old people out there dancing with their kids. That's another telltale sign that you're hitting the right cylinders when you see the, the all ages out there, not just one set. Uh, Dwayne, how do you tell you're hitting the group right when, again, people are dancing, people are singing along? What are at least three other ones you look for to hit to make sure you're 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 getting the right tunes, the right music out there? I look at their um, body movements and signs. Uh, if they're like bobbing and vibing to the music, or with, if they're conversating and seem like they're energetic uh, while they're conversating, or if they're in a corner and they're taking selfies, they and you know get into the group of the song. That's one, and then also I noticed that some I have a big sign that with my request now um, information on there. If they're running up there, taking a lot of um, scanning the QR code and requesting songs, and giving me the thumbs up, then I know I'm hitting it. 
And, and Jeff, when you do school events, when the kids are jumping up and down, is that another telltale sign that you're hitting the right stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you, you know, you play jump, they're going to all jump up and down, obviously. But um, yeah, you know, when the, when the floor is packed, um, you know, I mean, you, you can tell, you know, if you, you sometimes you make a mistake, I'll, th I'll throw a song on uh, that I think is going to hit hard and that people just die. You know, they're like, yeah, this was so two weeks ago. You know, you never know. And um, some, sometimes you you roll the dice and you don't always, you know, you, sometimes you come up snake guys. Oh, but, that's um, true. Very yeah, true. Sometimes though, you know, you, you hit the, you hit that right song and, um, and, and you're like, okay, it's lightning in a bottle for that, you know, for that, you know, two minutes. And um, yeah, and it, it feels good when everybody's out there. And the other thing it really hits, really hits hard is when somebody points up to you, like they like, you know, they, they point to you like you are playing the right song. You know, it's just some, you're, it might you're be the DJ, person, you're the man, you're the woman. That's, yeah, that's hitting the it's hitting the floor hard. If it's like a, a king on the floor or a queen on the floor that everybody's kind of looking at uh, when they look up to you and point to you and smile and nod the head, then, you know, OK, yeah, I've I've, I've, I've hit the right person. That's everybody else is going to follow their lead. So that's that's. That's another thing to look for is the and, king or queen on the floor that everybody's looking at. And there's also in the comments here, it says when the guests give you a high air, high five or a thumbs up or even wink at you. And, you know, that's, that is a, a good tell that they're, you know, you're hitting it. Just like Jeff said, you know, they're pointing at you going, yeah, you're the, you're the DJ, you're the person you're rocking it out. Or, you know, you see them grab something. One of the things I've always liked seeing if you play certain songs, people grab props, be it their sunglasses, be it, whatever, and they're coming on to the dance floor. So you DJ Bradley, who does uh, wonderful, beautiful bars and clubs, what are your three things that you look at uh, to uh, get hits? Well, and I'll, I'll say this for both weddings and clubs. One thing I'm watching is the bar. And at a bar or a club, if it's going empty for too long, I know I'm doing right to everybody there, but not right for the bar. So with that comes, you know, dropping that B song that everybody knows and loves, but they're not going to go as hard for, and maybe they're going to realize I need to go get that drink. You know, the subsequent BPM crash, just like you do at the end of a wedding, except with a slow song. Now at a wedding or, and, and at a wedding, I will watch the bar, but I'm paying attention to the bar at a wedding to see who's pounding harder and what they've been reacting to on the dance floor. So if they're pounding a few shots and I see them getting ready to leave, what am I going to drop next to re-engage those three or four people to get them back on the dance floor? And the other thing I do pay attention to is how long I've kept them out there for. Like I said, in, in what, nine months, I saw 18 ambulances at my weddings. And only two of them were old folks. So 16 people went too hard at my weddings. And that made me reanalyze how I'm programming my night. And maybe I need to back down a little earlier on before I really get into it. Uh, and with that, paying attention to the ebb and flow of the crowd, when is a good, should I be playing something like Usher's Yeah at 8 o'clock or 8.30? and really get them turned, so I push them over the top way too early, and then have to fight the rest of the night to keep them going. Or plan B, properly program that so I can keep the floor going and the ebb and flow continuing without losing a lot of people. So those are some of the, and obviously, crowd reaction, guest reaction from oohs, ahs, you know, swearing like, oh, holy, you know, this, Oh my God, things like that, people rushing the dance floor. And when I see certain, you know, groups of people rush back to the dance floor based on that genre, I'm gonna kind of start pushing to them. And no matter what, an hour after any of my receptions nowadays, maybe 90 minutes, if you're over 50, my age and up, it's time for you to go to bed. Leave. I don't want you here anymore unless you're gonna be doing what the kids are doing. Because we're going this way now, whether you like it or not, because that's what I've been told to do. So I really try to pay attention to when I can turn the dance floor to what my couple really wants. 
Okay. So uh, how, how about down in Texas? What are the three tells down there that you run into other than, again, people dance on the dance floor and sing along? What are the three things you look for? I'll say for me, I mean, the biggest one is just honestly like initial reactions to you dropping or playing a song. Um, initial reactions go a long way, whether it's, you know, people kind of, like Jeff said, like being yanked out to them to the dance floor, like you hit the right song for those ladies I want to go out there. Or people literally just like saying the word like, oh, like, damn, like something like that. Um, like initial reactions do go a long way um, for me. And then also when it comes to the, I also look for like, if people come up to me requesting songs that are fitting the vibe that I am playing, then that means I've struck a chord because maybe the past few songs I've played have made them think, oh, this next song would also go well with the set that you're going with. And so having people come feed me songs that I would already play anyways, or um, even sometimes like, oh, I haven't played that one in a minute, but it fits with the genre and the style I'm going with right now. Let me fit it in. Um, so those are kind of like the main two that I that I that haven't really been said necessarily um, that I look for. But yeah, just like initial reactions um, to dropping a song. And then um, if requests are hitting the exact same vibe that I'm going for, that I at least that's like positive feedback that I'm doing something uh, well for the for the crowd. And that, that's one of the things also that, uh, you know, getting those songs sometimes that, you know, again, fit in there. And see if it continues on with that momentum because it's sometimes hard because you put a song on, you're like, <coughs> this should hit. And whoop, all of a sudden, you got people sitting down, you're like, wait a second here. People should be out like fist bumping and, you know, jumping down and doing something to the song. And unfortunately, not. So, right. <coughs> it's, it's a hard one. And, you know, again, going back to what they said before. What, you know, like like Jeff said with the wedding party, when they start grooms, you know, groomsmen or bridesmaids, or um, you know, when those people stand up to the wedding, start grabbing each other, bring about the other thing. Also, is that you know, going building on top of Jeff, which I've seen, I'm sure you guys have seen it, is when guys grab each other, you know, they get that bro, that bro hug, and they're like you know hitting, and they're singing and putting their fingers up in the air, and they're, they're singing the songs to each other really loud, and and they're just getting a big group together, or Sometimes it happens. It help it happens to me quite a bit. You usually get that circle in the floor, uh, and it grows and grows and grows because people are just having fun yeah. dancing, and people go in between everyone. It, it, it's always these little tells that you look at, and you see what's successful. And the reason why you want that is, at the end of the day, at the end of the night, when those people go home, uh, you want them to remember how much fun they had at the event. And if they did not have fun at the event, then you kind of failed a little bit. But they walk away going, wow, that was exciting. I enjoyed myself. That was fun. They remember that. And a lot of times they're going to ask, when they, the uh, DJ? When they sing into their uh, beer bottle microphone, it's a dead giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is very much. The long thing is long enough to try and grab your microphone. Which I, I just want to see a quick uh, show of hands. Has anyone had a guest at an event try to grab your microphone at the DJ booth to sing or talk on? I'm strict. Jeff has. So no. I'm yeah, strict. It, it uh -oh. happened to me at my last wedding. Uh, they came up and wanted to grab the microphone so they could take it out into the crowd and um, and, and sing a song. And after about the third attempt, uh, I finally let one of the guys do it that was the least drunk of them. So I let him go out there and I just I turned his volume down to where he could just barely hear himself. But he was happy and it made it made them happy. They felt like, yeah, the DJ's cool, you know, so I don't do that very often, though. Bradley, you look like you want to say something. Oh, no, no, no. They First person you try to grab for my microphone, they get put into my command center or my toad, and the drawers get locked. We're done with them until the end of the night. You ain't cut. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not risking my gear, risking somebody doing the you know screamo death metal thing and blowing us. Now we're 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 just not gonna cover that area at all. That, that and living in the land of entitlement like Wisconsin, you know. And some of the crap I've seen people do, or my DJs are like, 
this bee just took the microphone and is now running. I'm like, turn it off. It's wireless. Just kill the signal to your board. And when she realizes it's off, she'll either set it down or bring it back. But there's a lot of stupid stuff like that. Hopefully not drop the microphone because we all know microphones are not cheap. At least oh, if you yeah. buy a good a good one. It's not you know a couple hundred bucks, three, four hundred bucks very easily for a replacement hand, handset. Oh yeah. And then Adrian E said I had a guest ask and I I I I obliged. It was the bride's grandfather. And again, something like that I have a problem with. What I'm talking about, Adrian, is the people who uh have a lot of adult beverage in them and think that now they're Frank Sinatra or fill in blank here of artists and they can sing along. Uh, and they can carry a tune when they're actually drunk uncle and they're incoherent and they're slobbering over everything. And those are the ones that, again, I, I don't give anyone the microphone unless the bride and groom okay it. And then, Matt, it's, you know, we just find out what's going on. That's the other part. But again, you have to do what's also <laughs> best and do your best judgment out there as a, a business owner and a DJ. And, you know, you want to make those moments that uh, people, you know, kind of like tear up a little bit because grandpa said something or, you know, someone said something that's loving, caring. Those are the ones you kind of have to fill out. You don't want to run into where a venue that Tracy and I did a couple years ago, the venue manager was telling us that uh, the week before the DJ asked after all the speeches, does anyone else have to say anything? 45 minutes later, dinner began. So he had improv night at the, uh, at the wedding that night. And that was not fun. Mm -mm. See, if it's that's not on my notes. No, no, huge no, no for me. I, I tell my couples, I say, guys, if there's anybody that's been given the blessing to say any kind of speech or anything, as a, their name has to be on my list. And I always make the joke of, we don't want drunk uncle saying what he shouldn't. Yep. I'm very, and they're always, authorized. they're always happy. They're always like, oh, oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for caring about that. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. I've actually, I've, I've actually had that happen before, but uh, with the microphone, but they always ask me for permission if they can sing something. I was like, sure. And there's a video here on TikTok. They're singing, you make it easy by Chase Nelly. And they have my microphone and he's singing. And I mean, I gave him permission. So I guess I'm okay with that. <laughs> the, um, the, the big thing again, about... wa walking away from tonight is that hopefully 2024, mm -hmm. this is, starts a beautiful year for everyone here. I wish everyone here watching, as well as everyone on YouTube and on Twitch, uh, a wonderful 2024. And all our group here have a blessed and successful 2024 in their gigs and being safe. And hopefully uh, very few I drunk uncles come and attack asking for microphones. With that said, I appreciate everything you guys do out there. Make sure you tune in here next week. We'll be back here. And hopefully Matt will be here next week. Uh, he wasn't wow. here this week, but uh, hopefully we'll be back, back next week. Again, we have our one we're returning. I got to go this way because it's this way. Uh, one of our returning DJs coming back here from beautiful state of Texas. I'm glad you came up here, brother. We miss you. And again, we hope to see you back here shortly again. And thank you so much. Everyone else, thank you. And then cool thing. Do me a favor. <laughs> see you guys later. Peace out. Thank you, sir. Woo!